Yeah, as you can see, production quality is top tier. Hold on. Now we're live. We're live. We're live now. Okay. Now we need our audio. There we go. Oh, that I was was thinking we were just live for the past minute, like, all right, I think we've listened to enough sweet I know. stock music, <laughs> we can jump in. I know. And everybody's just waiting out there, they're like, man, these guys promote themselves so heavy and they're not even here today. Yeah, we're so good at promoting, we tell you 24 hours oh, before the actual stream. <laughs> Come I know. Let's go. <laughs> That's how awesome it, this. but just don't show up. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. Start decreasing. I think everybody's. I think everyone's mostly here. Yeah, it's live. All right. All right. We're live. Well, welcome to the Atomics on a Friday, where this is the El Camino of security testing. And yeah, Paul, I'll let you run through this amazing agenda yeah. that we got GM in here today. So we are very excited for our Purple Madness series to kick off March. So uh, starting this week for the next four weeks, we'll be going live, uh, kind of taking a threat report and kind of diving into it from different backgrounds and perspectives. So in order to facilitate that and learn more about things like CTI and purple teaming, threat research, detection engineering, uh, we figured let's bring in some really talented people who can kind of share some information and really make an approachable uh, process to kind of diving into this and figuring out how to test and validate security tools uh, with Atomic. So uh, we'll kick it off by doing some introductions of who everybody is, talk about, you know, what the threat report will use. Uh, in this case, as we see, the theme is going to be Goot Looter and the Goot Loader, excuse me, and then we'll touch on the actual schedule. So uh, let's kick it off. Let's get people in. Let's have some fun. Cool. All right, let me push next. There we go. Uh, yeah, I, I'll add everybody in a second. We have another slide. Um, yeah, my name is Michael Haig. I'm a threat researcher at Splunk. <clears throat> you can find me on Twitter, mhaggis. If you don't know who we are, um, or at least who I am, I've been in the industry, I think, weirdly 12 years and did a little bit of everything from kind of like your PC support, sysadmin, all the way up to now threat research. Uh, formerly Red Canary, now Splunk. Right on. Uh, quick high level, I'm Paul. I'm a principal threat hunter at Red Canary. I've been in the industry probably six, seven years now. i um, worked my way from help desk uh, through traditional stock role, incident handling, incident response, and now threat hunting. Um, so huge proponent of Atomic Red Team. So that's where Mike and I decided to collaborate and kind of bring Atomics on a Friday back to life and kind of put a different spin on it and hopefully to share some good information with the community. But enough about us. We're yeah, the boring people. We want to bring in the fun people. The we have a lot of cool stuff to talk about, so let's get them in. All right. I'm going to take off this banner, change the slides, start adding everybody up. There's buttons. Got buttons. Right. Um, yeah. We just want to start from the top. Uh, Harrison, yeah. sir. Sure. Hey, how's it going? Uh, so I'm Harrison Van Riper. Um, I've been a researcher, intel analyst um, for about eight years. Um, I took, I guess, kind of a similar path, uh, started off as like sysadmin type stuff, um, then like network admin, didn't love that. So I wanted to go into like threat intel type stuff. So that's really where I spent the majority of my uh, short career. <laughs> so yeah. That's awesome. And Nas, you want to go next, buddy? Nas, ah, okay. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Nas. For whoever is wondering how to pronounce my name, it's Nasruddin Benchochali, and you know me as Nas Bench on Twitter. Uh, I've been in the security industry for about like six years almost, six, yeah. Uh, I started as a pen tester slash administrator of security tools and whatever, then I switched to the blue side and more detection engineering. I'm now a threat researcher at Nextron, where I focus mainly on everything related to Sigma and uh the endpoint and mainly windows yeah that's it i guess uh my turn <laughs> uh, my name is uh, yes. anton vritsky um i'm a threat research team lead at sumo logic uh previously at lorez consulting uh before that i worked with uh sims mostly 
uh, and then before that, uh, help desk, uh, like a, like a lot of you, I guess. Um, and I also have some like audit experience with like PCI and all that stuff, which is uh, not as fun as uh, <laughs> as the stuff I do now. Um, Anton loves DMB on Twitter. Uh, the DMB is drum and bass. I love drum and bass music. Uh, I get asked that a lot. <laughs> so that's, uh, yeah, find me, hit me up. Uh, happy to talk shop anytime. Well, somehow Finally, I always thought it said D and D. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, same as me. <laughs> yeah. D, D and B, yeah. I, I made that nickname like so when I first signed up for Twitter, I think it was like six, seven years ago. And I thought like it'll just be like a lurker account. And then it, the, the follower account grew and grew and it became a little bit more professional. Uh, so if I, if I could change my handle now, I actually, I probably wouldn't, you know, what? Uh, let's keep it <laughs> drum and bass represent. It's great music. So why not? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> that is awesome. sounds like we all had a role in help desk. So that's, that's somewhere we feel all aligned. And then, and then we all, and then we all moved away from it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I wonder how many password resets we all have under our belts oh <laughs> combined. Yeah. Thousands and thousands. Though, That's a great I don't think I would change. Like a lot of people are kind of like want to avoid kind of doing that, whether it's help desk or sysapp and network engineer. They kind of like want to bypass that and. Looking back, like at the time, I was like, oh, I don't want to do this anymore. Like, I can't, like, I got to pivot, like, sure. But now looking back, and I'm just like, I learned so much that applies directly to today that, like, I'm glad that I did that versus trying to go around it. And not saying that, like, either path's the right path or the wrong path. It's just uh, if you get the opportunity to do help desk, even if it's six months, 12 months, it, it builds so much knowledge while you're, you're breaking it. For sure. Yeah, for sure. I mean, some of the most, like smart <laughs> brilliant people that I've, I've met have started off doing that exact same thing so like i think it's a great way to get like a, a, you get a lot of exposure to a lot of different problems and like a lot of different like areas like right off the bat and, and you're in kind of like a i don't want to say like a low risk um you know environment but it's kind of like you're kind of newer to the field and like it's a good entry point so yeah i mean yeah, I know we all like moved away from it, but like it's definitely something that I would recommend doing for sure. Yeah, it's good until you, you hate yourself. So, <laughs> <laughs> there are some down times for sure, just like in any role, but like don't let that be the deciding factor if that's the path you go. <laughs> I love that we turned into a career. Thing. <laughs> this is awesome right off the bat it's a valid topic yeah it is yeah i mean yeah I, like you mentioned like how many times did you install office and you're digging through the directories to figure out why something wasn't working and now you know more than you did ever yeah. before i learned so much about app data just by working the help desk because like, everything dumps yeah. everything there, and so you get really good at like where all the things are stored yeah. and roaming profiles oh it's Oh yeah, that's group policy. You've never, yeah. Oh goodness, yeah. Group policy is great. Now, now you're just making me nostalgic for group policy options. I know. <laughs> Woo, group policy, GPMC. All right, all right. Um, we have any more slides? Uh, yes. yeah, we have the good one to to build some okay. more background. You know, kind of talking about where we Ooh. are. Let's keep the ball rolling. Um, okay. you already touched on like who you are what you do uh but now let's touch on favorite group malware tool like the thing that gets you excited for me it was emotet for years like it was like what i every morning i'm like all right where's the new one waiting for it uh, so that was back in my sock days that was uh my one true love so far but curious what everybody else's thing is whether you love it or hate it what is it uh yeah i mean i'll, I'll go, go first oh. um go ahead Harrison. So, so I, I kind of started off um, doing some like external uh, threat intelligence. So like uh, I was working at a company called Digital Shadows. And so like we track a lot of like cyber crime stuff. So my favorite from that time period and it's kind of lasted has been uh, the Dark Overlord, which like back then, you know, kind of like 2017, 2018, when they were kind of really <laughs> going, going after it, um, you know, ransomware was like pretty rampant and uh, they kind of took a little bit of a different path of just like ex pure extortion. 
And I think like that sort of signaled a little bit of a shift, like in the, in the industry and like, in like how cybercrime was kind of being done. Um, it was all just as a cyber, as a cybercrime sort of analyst at the time, it was just fun to kind of track that, right. Like track, track those actors and track them over the forums and whatnot. So, um, so yeah, probably a little, it's a little bit different than like, uh, the more traditional, I guess, but you know, that's, that's just, uh, that's it. That's mine. That's a very cool perspective actually, because like, like from my background, I've never really dug into like, like that side of going after, let's say like attribution, right? Like that's, that's really cool. So it's kind of a spot I've never dug into enough of other than just like reading about it. <laughs> yeah pro pro maybe stuff that i've written you never know so. <laughs> yeah probably <laughs> actually by the way your blog on your blog was really good and that's what i that was one thing i shared with paul um that i really liked it was a good read i think it was thanks. a russia one. Oh yeah yeah the, the about the invasion yeah yeah thanks thanks for that yeah yep yep it was good sorry <laughs> all right so maybe i'll go next yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So I have I have a small story, which which is when I started, I was recruited uh, as a pen tester to pen test internal applications of the company because the company I used to work for was writing software internally and they need pen testers. So I was never interested in the blue side until the one incident. And I think everyone has a similar story to some extent until that one incident and we didn't have any incident responder. So we kind of have to uh, improvise. And one of the things that, that I really hated was like the eternal blue exploit mm -hmm. because the whole, like we had, we had a fleet, a very big fleet and apparently it was infected since a long time. <laughs> And now when the role was created, like everybody discovered how important that is. So it was a really painful time to clean everything up. <laughs> so I really <laughs> love it slash hate it because oh, it changed man. my perspective, but it's, it's really annoying. <laughs> and, and just as a side note, not everyone was domain joined because it's a classic and <laughs> it's really difficult to join those yeah, machines and clean everything up. But I, I really hate it, yeah. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> what do you got, Anton? Uh, I don't really have a, like a favorite group or malware, but my favorite tool is White Chocolate Macadamia Nut by Justin Bui, and I, I hope I'm pronouncing his last name right. Uh, so I apologize if I'm not. Uh, I think like cookie theft is a really interesting technique. I love it. Uh, it's just one of those things that it, it sounds big benign when you think about it. Like, what's the big deal if you steal my browser cookie? But then when you actually like think about the implications of like if you're able to see a browser cookie of someone who's like mfa and all that stuff like how powerful that is uh i just I, I love that technique and i love that you can like tunnel it um just such a cool tool the way it starts like chrome and headless mode and all that stuff so i don't know as soon as i saw the blog where, where he outlined that tool I, I fell in love with that with the tool itself and the technique and everything uh so i i, I don't have like a i don't know much about like malware families and all that just like you might could not my bag, but the, the tools, uh, I think it's a really sweet tool, but yeah. I think it's interesting because, you know, before we got live, we were talking about like identity and how identity is kind of can be like the, the next frontier of where it kind of takes place and you kind of already starting to see the shift of it. Uh, but cookie theft is just one of those ones that fits into place, especially like your point, you know, MFA, like if you can get the MFA session inside, like that's, that's it. You're, you're good to go. Yeah, I, I remember the first time I tried it, like on one of my like test boxes, like signed into a browser and then opened another one and just shoved that cookie in. I was like, oh my goodness, like this is, <laughs> <laughs> like, this is more powerful than maybe cats. Why are people like, like so obsessed with maybe cats, but this is like crazy. So yeah, I don't know, just love, love the tool, love the technique. It's always one of those like, that is you're like, oh, how bad cool. could this be? And then you like realize how simple and stupid, <laughs> and now it's like really bad. And you're like, all right, here we go. It's <laughs> Down pretty bad. Hole. Yeah, yeah, and like the detection opportunities with it too. Like, there's a couple, right? The command line and all that stuff, but like the there, there's not an event in Chrome that says like, hey, your cookie just got like swiped or anything like that. So just an interesting problem to solve, interesting technique all around. So but that's my favorite tool. 
it's hard to detect the cookie monster. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> and so your cookies are all gone. That's how you know. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I have like a crazy story that was probably my favorite malware event that I ever dealt with. It, it's old, but it was the Xpiro malware, X-P-I-R-O. And I think it was like a semantic blog back in the day. <clears throat> we had a company get hit with it. I was at an MSSP. They got hit and it literally it modified every binary by appending itself to it. And so AV was quarantining every file across the organization. So quarantine was just exploding. And they called us and they were like, why is our AV quarantining everything? And we're like, I don't know, like maybe you got a bad virus. <laughs> and so, um, but it, it spread through the whole organization because they had shared drives. So everybody would click on the files on the shared drive and they would just keep spreading endpoint to endpoint. And my favorite part of the incident was their domain controller was also the, <laughs> the shared server file share as well. <laughs> so the domain controller was completely wrecked. <laughs> but yeah, it's See, probably like, not these, a good day for... But. Those are the kinds of things that you learn about, like why that's so bad as a sysadmin or like as a network admin, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> why, why did our network appliance not catch this? I don't know. <laughs> Signatures went up to date. <laughs> Last one before we go in. <clears throat> OST debate. I know Justin's here. Oh, very excited you, about you this. Skip, you skipped Vim and Nano. Like, We're going to go. Are... We, like, we'll skip that one. That was probably the easy one. Like... We got we to gotta meet <laughs> Justin Quota. Let's do it. Yeah. OST. Good, bad, neutral. It's a, uh, yeah. it's a spicy, spicy question. Here, since Justin is here, we'll say bad. <laughs> Just to trigger. <laughs> 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 um, so I guess, uh, you know, I mean, may as well just say anything at this point. Cause like, it's gonna, it's gonna go off the rails, but, um, <laughs> I, I think like, I think like, I think my TLDR would be like, uh, neither, which is kind of like a cop out answer, but like, I think it's just like the way that it is right now, like that it, it's just, they exist and like, you have to just have to deal with it. So, um, <laughs> So, yeah. See, I know. I mean, like, you can say anything. It just doesn't even matter. Um, so, but yeah, I mean, like, I think the intent, at least from my perspective, has been good, right? The intent behind them is typically good. Um, I think the result of them, though, can be bad. <laughs> so it's kind of hard to, like, balance it out. Um, but yeah. I'll, I'll stop there before I <laughs> before I get to get into much more. <laughs> yeah, I, I think like I think the outside of like Cobalt Strike and that being leaked or stolen or whatever and cracked and shipped, but like think of Havoc, right? Like he creates it to to learn. He's young and he's he's creating it to learn something. Then he releases it. I don't. I mean. In a way, I'm kind of like, well, what did, we, what did what did anyone expect at that point? Of course, it's going mm. to be abused, you know? So it's like, if you're going to release it, it's going to be used no matter what, I think, in malicious mm. instances. NimPlant, great example. NimPlant, early release to people who want to write detections. It's released, and we already see it popping up everywhere on Shodan. <laughs> you know, so it's, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. I, I, I guess I'm a, kind of a neutral stance on what I'm saying, but it's... It's kind of like if you release it, it's going to be abused. I, yeah. How how I think of it is like that. There are two sides. So there is the the high level side, which is the researcher EDR vendor side, and there is the normal people side. What people tend to forget is sometimes that not like the discussions in Twitter and the detections in Twitter are only a fraction of what happens, and like ninety percent of how you get your detections, you'll get it via a vendor. And if you try like to do the contrast that the C2 frameworks help you understand the techniques and helps the researcher more than the simple user because the abuse, the chain between the abuse and the detection release via the vendor is not as quick. So I think it's good for, for the researcher because it's always good. But for the end user, I think the issue is here. 
like people tend to forget that the end user most of them don't have like security administrators most of them don't update their signatures every day and all that shenanigans that comes with it so that's the bad side of it but the but the good side is i mean you advance the security research like half of the techniques or half the detections were were, were created because that the, the offensive side created those tools so like a, a good example is mimikatz versus microsoft like the advancing the the like he forced microsoft to do some changes which is good but at the same time <laughs> we have still people running xp so or yeah. <laughs> running windows 7 so like it's expected but what do you do yep. <laughs> yeah. yeah i think it's I it's it Oops, so or like the recent pwc pwc signed mimi cats right like Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> I bet they want go. that one back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I think for me, like the it, it's a very spicy topic for a Friday afternoon, that's for sure. <laughs> but the uh the like I, I think it's important to acknowledge that without the contributions of OSTs, like a lot of our careers, or at least mine, wouldn't be the way it is today, that's for sure. Like I remember um when I was like really deep into some stuff, you know, like People like Casey and Matt Gray were tweeting out all, all these techniques left and right daily almost. And uh, it, it was, I didn't even know if those would be considered OSTs, but it, it's just, I think it's important to acknowledge like the the like the like flowering of the industry that came from these OSTs. So it feels a little disingenuous to, you know, like say that they're bad after you've already built yourself up using them kind of thing or you built up your product using them or built up your service or whatever have you so uh, it, but there are days where I, I think it was last year or the year before that where you see like the contrast of hey new cobalt strike and then in the very next tweet it's like hey this hospital is being ransomed using beacon so you know as an industry that kind of sucks you, you know i don't think anybody really wants to see that but at the same time we, we kind of built ourselves up using these OSTs, using things like, like Metasploit, uh, you know, Cobalt Strike for those who have access to it, um, all these other tools. So it, it, yeah, it's a, it's a tricky, tricky tightrope. I, I, I will say that the, at least like the discussions nowadays seem to be much more respectful with it. But I, I remember like last year or two years ago, the industry was just like tearing each other apart o over this. And it was really like, kind of crappy to see at the time. So I'm glad that we kind of got over that and we're talking about it more in a more like professional and respectful manner. Yeah, even I bringing up like Cobalt, even a couple of years ago, it was like hard to come across as far as like building any kind of detections unless you ran up against someone using it as a defender. You're like, most folks probably never saw it, right? And, and I remember... Um, Oh, what was it? It was, you could find it on virus total. You could find it some random places. Maybe it was cracked, but it probably came with more. Um, but I, yeah, I, I remember even just back then it was when, when more, when Raphael Mudge was running it, I guess. Um, it was just one of those things that you couldn't really get to. It was more uh, frowned upon to, uh, and I think it was in their license where you couldn't write detections on it. And so defenders really had no chance. Um, it wasn't being released or shared, right? Like it was very just kind of black box at that point. Like you had no idea. And, but now I feel like you can write about almost any C2 without someone coming after you. Or there's enough open source ones. It just doesn't matter anymore. Right. That, that's what I was going to say. It's like, you've seen like, uh, what was it um, that got really popular? Was it Sliver that got kind of popular for yeah. a minute? Yeah. Um, yeah, so I was, that's what I was going to say. It was like the open source C2 stuff, like that that can kind of fill in that gap if you really wanted it to. Yeah, I think people focus yeah. a lot on like the C2, C, the, the C2 part of it, but not so much the framework part of it, where a lot of these frameworks are frameworks like Mythic is a good example. It, you know, it, it's very modular, it comes with different, um, I, I forget what the, the terminology is, the payload types for it, but the the actual like thing that makes it by your EDR isn't mythic, right? It's the it's the particular agent or the particular way that you load that Cobalt Strike shellcode or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it's a very like 
nuanced distinction that probably only like large infosec nerds like us understand right it's hard to <laughs> it's it's hard to articulate that to the board for example right they see like cobalt strike bad and metasploit bad but it's a interesting discussion for sure but i think i also think there is the aspect of uh the advancement of detections versus versus the capability. I think the current capability of writing detections for those tools is very, very immature. I don't know how to express it, but it's it's not very advanced. Like the capability, like for example, half of the detections that are written right now are process command line like detections or single event detections. Whereas these things happen in memory and there is no single way of writing detections. So a lot of people are frustrated because you cannot write for this shit. And sorry for the language, but <laughs> you cannot try. You cannot try it for this. But it's, I think it's more of a discussion. As I said, it's a high level. It's actually an EDR problem, or it's an industry problem, versus like a, a normal people problem or an engineering problem. Like if you're working in a company, you're working with the tools that you have and the telemetry that you have. And if the telemetry is bad, well, you cannot do as much. But the advancement of the offensive side with the de defensive side is the real issue here because I think a lot of people from the defense side see that they we didn't reach that level of like writing detections for that kind of stuff. I mean, half of the people aren't talking about like correlation, even though it was introduced in CMs like in 2003 or whatever. <laughs> like this distinction, I think it creates frustrations and this frustration is expressed like I hate C2s. I mean, there is a, a, a like 80% reality, which is when you release something, you got to own, own up to it and it will cause harm eventually because people are abusing it. But at the same time, like we're still seeing uh, like, how do you say, run DLL being abused and nobody is talking about it. So this indicates that detection isn't really advanced as people are saying, but nobody wants to admit it. <laughs> and at the same time, like... Like C2s are good, but yeah, people need to calm down. <laughs> I think kind of going off of that is that the, the blue team hasn't really pushed as aggressively as like the OST side of things, like the red teaming tool development, right? Like, and it could be a number of things. Like, I think it's also like time and dedication to it. Like the amount of people to dedicate to spending time analyzing, figuring it out and really getting a, a good grasp and understanding of it right? You got 10 new C2s last year as a arbitrary number, like that's time to go look and investigate in all of them. Not saying that it's a bad thing, but it, it is a challenge. Um, but I feel like there is an opportunity from the industry as a whole to be more transparent about detecting and actual prevention, not just buy our stuff and you're golden. Like that's just black box and you have no idea if it's true or not, unless you then go test and validate against it. Um, so I feel like there is the opportunity for us as defenders and Purple teamers to go push that even more, and things like Sigma is a great start. Uh, things like the the Rodriguez brothers have done with the um, data testing, given the, the data out there, so you can go kind of analyze it. Um, again, still manual efforts, and there's still time investment to go then just make sense of that data. But it is an opportunity to to push even more and, and figure it out at scale and be more transparent. I think that's the big thing to kind of counteract the offset. And Randy's comment in YouTube, which is I'd always rather have access to the offensive tools. I have to defend against than constantly be surprised by the stuff I know nothing about. I think that's a great perspective. Like, yeah, dump them all out. Cause then at some point I'll get to it, but still going to need to figure it out. But yeah, I'd rather know about it than be blind to it. And you see some of the cool things that like MD sec is putting into their Nighthawk agent and platform. If you go read about it, some of that's really slick and I'm curious how it comes about, but I can't touch it yet, but at some point we'll get there. Um, so it's kind of interesting. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. I'm for it. More offensive tools, but we need to count. Yeah, even <laughs> even Brutal Tal, right? Even just the simple leak that it had, uh, the two versions. I think like that. That alone brought some new, you know, tradecraft out to the wild that maybe folks had never seen. And there it is, you know. And to now, as your point, it's it's hard because it's like everybody has a different product and there's only so many things that can do detection in certain pieces and, and points and, and points of view or optic into certain things. And I remember there was an, maybe there still is an EDR out there that uses like Yara for memory scanning. And, you know, it's just, 
it all just, it's everywhere still, <laughs> you know, not every product is the same either. There's some that capture uh, like script lock logging. And then there's still some that don't like, man, like, where are we here? Like this should have all been done by now. Yeah. I think that's, I think that's a really good point. There, there's not a lot of um, comparability among, uh, you know, among that big range of products. Um, yeah. I, I think that's actually a really good example of like the script lock logging, like, that's something that, you know, it, it seems so obvious, right? Obviously, I know I'm not I'm not an engineer on the back end, like developing that kind of thing. I obviously know that that's going to be more difficult to like really implement, but it's been a thing now for like a long time. So like, let's try and let's try and like raise that bar, you know, but um, yeah. but yeah. I wonder yeah. if the bar was raised high enough. What, this what one additional thing is such a discussion. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, like, I wonder if, if, if people had like a network where you had like application control, segmentation, hardening, and then they would be like, what's E2? Like, it, it doesn't matter to me, you know, whether it's, whether it's a mm. run DLL with a Nighthawk DLL or a run DLL with a Cobalt Strike DLL, it doesn't matter. We, we don't, we don't allow that in our network. And, and I've worked with a couple of customers like that back in the day. And it was, uh, it's very, it, it changes the paradigm completely when, when, when they have, like that kind of control over the network, but it, it's always the people. It, it was never like the product, right? Everyone has the same, I don't want to say the same budgets and the same like means available to them, but that, you know, companies are fairly well off the larger ones that they could purchase whatever they need to purchase. And, and that usually wasn't the differentiator. It was always the, the team behind that product and whether they mm -hmm. like really cared and cared enough to like roll up their sleeves and like dig into the logs and make sure that that like, cobweb server was still sending the logs and stuff like that and, and that made the difference right that that the, the those people don't need to worry about the you know the new c2s or, or, or like as cool as nighthawk is they probably don't need to worry about nighthawk either it's just a just an interesting paradigm but sorry now so yeah go ahead yeah i was just going to talk about the the aspect of logging and product based logging versus the actual capability of logging like if you check out how you can write detections, you either can express them via the product language. And if the product can't or can't provide that telemetry, then uh, quote unquote, you're, you're stuck. You cannot write that information or you cannot write that detection. And the, in contrast, for example, the C, the C2 is or any offensive tooling has access to everything. Like he has access, just imagine that if you want to write a tool, you have access from the Windows API from the low level to the to the highest level. But from a logging perspective, you're very limited to first by the vendor, what he is showing us, like either process creation or whatever. And the, the, the telemetry capabilities right now are very limited and we don't have control over from what choke point we collect the telemetry. For example, process creation is easily bypassable. Doesn't mean, doesn't mean that it is bypassed in most cases, as we've seen in reports, but the fact that it is bypassable and you can't do anything about it except for changing your source of telemetry and go look, for example, at ETW or whatever, I think that's an issue in detection that's not talked about enough. Like we're very limited by the vendor and the vendor is a software company that has a, a, a chain of updates and you're limited when they will release that update into and like you cannot advance at the same level as anyone from the offensive side, which is a shame, <laughs> but, and there is the, the people aspect of it. Like when you try to write detection, you need people, you need research, you need whatever, blah, blah, blah. But the idea is the biggest issue is like detection right now is t a telemetry issue. Like we cannot control it. And two, most people don't understand at what level they are detecting. So... It's, it's a really complex issue, but, but to be able to, to go ahead and speak at that level of where the OSTs are, you need a, a level of understanding that isn't, that isn't provided by the vendor right now. Like Sigma tried to solve this issue, but maybe not yet, but we need like a unification of logging and a capability to describe our detections in a more generic way and in a more detailed way. And where the detection engineer has control to write what he wants to detect. Yeah. I'm going on a tangent, but stop <laughs> me when I stop me when I when I, think I this when was I your, 
No, you're good. I think this was a tweet you just shipped out, right? Um, 20 hours ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Part yeah, of it. Yeah. 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 yeah, part of it. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I love it. <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, this has been fun. Good discussion. And uh, kind of we'll catch up and just kind of get in some different perspectives, which is kind of why we're here, right? We want different perspectives as we go through this March Madness series, uh, Purple Team Madness. Forgot what we're branding it as, a little bit of everything, but um, really just provide different perspectives versus just whatever Mike and I feel like that day um, to, to kind of bring some sense into it. Uh, so let's kind of kick off and go into like what we're actually going to do the next few weeks. Um, so, Mike, you want to hit the next page? Next slide. Oh, yep. So, what are we even doing here? Uh, so, the idea was to take a threat report and in a very simplistic means, like how can I read this, interpret pieces of information out of it and make it approachable to go test and validate security controls and, and, and detection and analytics? Do I have things like the right log sources? Do I have the right data points? Um, how do I approach which tests to run, right? How do I interpret the report from an Intel perspective of like what matters out of this versus, okay, this is cool, but maybe not prioritization and just get some different ideas of pitfalls things to avoid, like what should we do? Um, so we're gonna use everybody's favorite tool, a spreadsheet to kind of track this and use that throughout so that like you, at the end we can present it in like a GitHub repo and kind of just go through exactly what we did or follow along as you're kind of watching the series. Um, and just kind of make it really simple and approachable. Like what is like the MVP, the, the minimum vile product that I could do to kind of go through this process. And so um, we appreciate everybody joining on the panel to, to kind of provide your perspectives and how we can approach this and make it simple, whether it's a seasoned professional or somebody just trying to break in. So that's what we're all about here, just trying to share some information and perspectives and hopefully people learn from it. But uh, yeah, on the next slide, we just kind of high level again, the, the kind of different parts along the way that we're going to do. Uh, so we'll punch the next one. So we'll start off by taking a, a report that we're actually going to go to a uh, goot loader. Uh, I feel like we kind of jumped on the bandwagon, but when we pitched this idea, that report had just come out like four weeks ago. And now I've seen like 10 posts and some great malware analyst reports on Gootloader. And I'm like, do I, I feel like we kind of like joined the bandwagon, but I also feel like we were trying to do this sooner than that. But anywho, uh, so we'll start off with threat intelligence again, kind of how do I interpret and take out and pull out TTPs? Um, how do I kind of list them and stack them? Like things to look for, things I kind of want to avoid or things that I may want to circle back to, but there's other prioritization that occurs. Um, and then once we kind of have that, we're going to feed that into our purple teaming session where we're going to take the different TTPs and uh, map them out. Um, we're going to develop a plan that we can test with, then use things like atomics or even custom hand things that we may have to do that kind of lightweight to, to make it approachable. Um, and then what do we do? So like, cool, we ran all these tests. Like now what? Like how do we validate? Like, did we see it? Um, did we have things fire? Did we not have things fire? Right? If we're expecting to see a network connection, did we actually see it? If not, like there's a starting point. Um, and then once we do the test, we want to go review the data. Right, So going into like the detection engineering kind of threat research side of things of like, did my detectors work? Did they not? Do I have the right data sources? If not, like how do I go find those? Like how can I make this approachable? Um, and then just kind of like wrapping it all together so that like you take this approach and you can apply it to the next time a report comes out or then start to do more advanced things. Right, So kind of using this as hopefully like a starting point be able to kind of get some ideas and then apply it to whether you're doing it already or you're brand new um, and just kind of like build that, that fundamental framework. Um, Goot loader. Uh, if this is your image, uh, please don't sue me. Uh, I borrowed this from a blog post, but it was for Goot kit and my Photoshop's not great. And again, our production quality is top tier. So it's Goot loader. There is a difference between Goot loader and Goot kit we're going to focus on the loader parts, the initial one. Um, so if we jump into the next slide, there's been a whole bunch, as I mentioned, of things that have been occurring over the last few weeks from uh, Goot Loader. Uh, there's a lot of great blog posts, even stuff from last year, the year before, that has been around a little bit. Um, so we're going to focus on the mandate report as kind of like our starting point, but not necessarily the only point we'll use in kind of figuring out what to do. Um, Okay, who added the, the Goots picture in the corner? Because that wasn't there yesterday when I saw this. <laughs> that that was me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, like, I, I had to. Added it I mean, yeah, no, I had to. Why not? That's awesome. Uh, yeah, but I level did anything. So, like, I've come across Gootloader. I've probably faced it, but never really 
deep dived into like the actual Intelli's like threat research side of it. Anybody else here have any experience or background on it or look into it? Like, it was going to be fresh for me as well. So, yeah, well, I mean, yeah. So like I, I had been tracking bootloader at Red Canary for a while. Um, and yeah, so, so it's, it's definitely been a thing for quite a, quite a long time, not, not quite a long time, but it's been, it's been kind of one of those, interesting sort of like pop-ups that's been uh kind of being all the traction so like you say like the the media report that came out like it's pretty in depth so that'll be a good good little starting point um to kind of like dig into right on not super excited yeah, but blog is 16 minutes long according to its read time it's it's a good one it's, it's beefy yeah. as they say yeah <laughs> beefy it's the goots yeah it's the goots I can't get a picture. <laughs> and it's it's just top up. Here. I, I, yeah. Every time I, I see need, it. I need to add that somewhere. <laughs> yeah. Save that for later. Um, <laughs> but cool. Uh, no, so sure. this will be very exciting. So uh, again, I started reading into it a little bit today. We've come across it, but my, my perspective is like, I don't necessarily care what the evil is other than this thing is evil and we go handle it type of thing. So that's always been like my thought process. So getting into like the intelligence side of it or that side of it, but as well as mapping into like taking this and I have ideas and kind of vision of how I would approach it, but I'm always curious to how other people think about it and approach it. I think getting different perspectives is always a great way to just kind of broaden the knowledge and find something that maybe it's different. Maybe it's new. Maybe it's kind of just a spin on something you're already doing. So I think it's be a really cool idea. And then of course I love finding threats. So figuring out, do we have the right data and is there better data to use to detect it? Uh, so really excited to kind of just dive into all aspects of it. It's really exciting. Yeah. My, the first thing I thought when I read the Mandiant one, I was like, why would anybody click a JS file? But we're still there. <laughs> Still there. Still happens. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> not, not, not only the JS file, but I, I love how they open the zip and double click it from the zip. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful, yeah. beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. It's just my invoice. <laughs> maybe, they, maybe they thought it was a, you know, a Goots picture. They don't know. They, they got to they gotta wow. open it up to see. <laughs> I'd, I'd open it. I mean, I'd yeah, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like those mp3s that. you used to download that always had that double extension of an exe at the end yeah the totally legit. From yeah, yeah totally safe yeah. Totally that, legit. that's when you know it's good yeah yeah <laughs> so vincent asked uh how do we choose what malware to look at uh great question i think this kind of just dropped and uh it was like the most exciting thing at the time. Uh, there was a couple of things, but it was like, just kind of like, this is a great report. Like, there's a lot of information in here from just all perspectives. Um, so we're not really necessarily focused purely just in, uh, on this, but as like part of this kind of series that we're doing for March, uh, we kind of want to stick with one central theme. And this is kind of like that. There was no like real rhyme or reason other than it dropped. It was super cool. Had a lot of different perspectives that we could apply to it. I'm thinking about. But generally, we were kind of like threat agnostic, if you will. Like we'll take anything and everything and kind of dive into it. Uh, we, we love them all. Just like OSTs, like we can debate which is the better C2 framework. Like I'm happy to have that discussion too. Uh, I think that's a great one. <laughs> like, that's a good discussion. I mean, honestly, it is. Like it's really interesting. Like we, we should do a separate series just on like which is the best C2 framework and get some other people on. I think like we could have like 20 people going in this diff- I was, I was going to say that's going to be a it's going to be a spicy conversation even even yeah. just the OST just broader conversation is spicy but then getting into like what's your favorite C2 then yeah I never did debate club but I feel like if we structured it like debate club I think that would be a really killer thing like we there could probably go. do some put like some charity aspect around it like raise some money and just donate it out like I think that would be, I think we'd get a bunch of people involved for that and have a blast you with can, it. You uh, can the cost. charity could be a children's hospital that was hit by <laughs> one of these things. <laughs> that. Yeah. That's, that's like, a legit yeah. option. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I still you want me to hit the next slide again. Things. 
I know. I and actually. I, I don't want to leave just because this, of but... the picture. Like. I could reload and put it on every slide. I'm, I'm just saying. You're gonna miss you, you Goots. Gonna miss you. Yeah, if, I'm just saying that what you what everybody needs to do is if you if you use Slack in your org or wherever, you got to make that into like a little little emoji and you know just throw that whenever something happens. There's also the uh, the bang command that you can specify a keyword that anytime that keyword gets dropped, it just drop that picture. Every there you go. Time, like, Even better. From experience creating them myself like highly effective highly recommend it especially if you're the workspace admin and nobody can change it like <laughs> really really good spot uh, or if you bribe, bribe the it people I, i'm not opposed to a little light crime to kind of have some fun stack <laughs> workspaces so i think i, I, I think crime, but... not, not to give like too much behind the scenes but i think there's still a bang uh hey at ray canary <laughs> There is. It triggers the other day. <laughs> that, that's probably how you make it. That's probably the story. Yeah. That'll be gone soon. <laughs> no, I'm going to go add four more, not just a yeah. just hidden ones. Put it in their goose. <laughs> the threat model is about chain after the stream. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, I guess. Yeah. I think I'll leave it there. There's some good ones in there. Yeah, I don't know why I'm doing it. There's too much good ones. <laughs> if you ever get a job at the canary, you'll find out. You'll find out. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm sharing too much. I'm sharing too much. Hank's going to take me out. Yeah. Behind the scenes. Yeah. People are right here. He's like, no idea. I'm probably going to go start looking now. Like, yeah. <laughs> turn back around. It's Just like Goose. This is going to be awesome. <laughs> I, goose. That's, that one still works, too. I triggered like three times in one channel. It was, it was awesome. It was actually this week. This is, once, you, once you see the goose on Twitter, the, the goose on fire, you know what it means at Rick Canary. So, yeah. <laughs> the goose signal. <laughs> it's the goose signal. All right. right. I'll do the next slide now. Yeah. <laughs> we lost something. We're back. Sorry. Too many buttons. <laughs> so. High-level schedule, uh, sounds terrible, buffering. Is it everybody, Randy, or is it just me? Um, uh -oh. Uh oh Let's give it a second. That's is it better? I can hear you okay, but... Yeah, I was saying, I can hear all the panels fine. Uh, yeah. yeah, same. Maybe finish up. And then yeah, it'll be on YouTube. Wrap it. Uh, thanks for pointing that out. Um, this is again a very low quality uh, production that we put on here, so I'm not expecting too much. But uh, schedule. Uh, so this will be uh, one o'clock Eastern, eighteen hundred UTC uh, going forward for the next ones. Um, and we'll modify. If, you know, everybody's got busy schedule, so if we need to modify, we'll of course do like a recording and put it out. Um, so we'll keep this going. Um, so if things come up, but uh, so we'll start off with uh, Threat Intelligence with Harrison next Friday. Then after that, we'll go with uh, Anton doing some purple teaming and planning and mapping some atomics and ripping some tests. And then we're going to wrap up and, and finish it out with Nas on the 24th and really dig into some data sources. So really looking forward to all these. Again, thank you all for, for participating. I think this is going to be a great uh, series and really looking forward to uh, digging and having fun. It is Actually, we don't use Zoom. This is StreamYard. Um, it's web-based. And I will shill for it. We're not paid by them, but for like point and click, like this is top tier. Like you cannot get any better. And the free version is killer as well. Uh, don't sleep on it. Uh, we'll have to see how that how the audio quality is. Apparently, yeah, I'm just gonna have to backtrack on this a little bit. But uh, yeah, other than that, like if you don't need to speak, it's perfect. <laughs> Nobody talk. <laughs> That's great. We just sign and everything will be good to go. Awesome. I think that's it. I think Sweet. that's all we got. Anybody got any final wraps? Um, so we'll we'll have this sh we'll have our slides shared out. So any of the things we're going over, as well as the date times, we'll get those posted. Um, also, the references we'll be using going forward. Um, so we'll have those ready. And uh, again, feel free to follow along or catch up later on the recordings and uh, let's have some fun with it. Again, thanks everybody, and uh, we'll catch you next time.
Cool. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you all. Thank you for joining. Really appreciate yeah. it. For sure. Yeah. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you.